All right, Tanner, I'm coming your way first because this marks your first big role on a TV show. So two part question here. One, what is something about working on the wilds that like just felt right to you the second you hit set? Something that made you believe like I'm here, I'm doing it and I'm, I'm made for this. But then on the other hand, what's something that required a little bit of a learning curve that you had to adapt to? Well, flat out, just um, it's going to sound super corny. It's going to sound super cheesy. But when I did my first scene with Reed, like that was really the time where I was like, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm meant to be here just because we fell into our characters so easy, so quick. And we like we were hanging out outside of, of filming and it was just like I had to pinch myself sometimes because I'm like. I'm making a great friend and we're, and we're playing best friends on TV. What, are you kidding me? This is great. Um, and uh, what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. A, le- a learning curve, something that maybe you didn't expect and you had to adapt to. Doing like group scenes. Cause like a lot of the time, like with my dialogue, it's mainly to read, but when we're all together and there's a lot of dialogue and we're all going back and forth, like the timing, and like feeling out everybody's um, everybody's moves and everybody's sort of aura, I guess, is is difficult. But you know, like you do it a few times and you sort of get used to it. But that was probably my biggest learning was my was was just was trying to get a handle on everyone at the same time. All right, Reed, I was doing my homework on you too. So I was reading a little bit about, you know, your musical theater training, going on a Broadway national tour, all that wonderful stuff. What inspired the shift to screen work? And even with all that stage experience, is there anything about what it takes to shoot a TV show or a movie or anything on screen that surprised you? Uh, I think what inspired, it was just like a a hunger for, for, you know, more opportunities to entertain. I, 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 that's just like the type of person that I am. I love to entertain, put smiles on people's faces. And so after doing the tour and stuff, my parents and I, we decided to move to Los Angeles and see what I could get going. You know what I mean? Like uh, my parents were very, very real about like wanting me to continue my life as well as trying to be in the industry. So I didn't just get bombarded by the industry and stuff. Um, What was the second part? (laughs) Second part of the question. I don't even remember. Uh, you have all this uh, experience acting on stage, but what oh, is, oh, yeah. uh, what's something about what it takes to act for the camera that felt different? Um, I, I actually am gonna agree with Tanner on that one. Like finding the groove with with other actors, because you know, like we've all come from different places. Like I, I did a lot of stage stuff. Some of the people in the cast went to drama school. Some of the people in the cast just you know were just acting and and somehow found themselves on the wilds, you know what I mean? And, and so I like finding that rhythm with the cast and sitting in table reads and, and trying to get that locked down so that you can create a great piece of work. Um, it's definitely a, a challenge, but not in a negative way. It's, it's sort of the fun of it. You know, it's like, okay, we, we here together, like, what can we do? Let's make some magic, you know? Um, cast chemistry on this show delights me to no end. They set a pretty damn high bar in season one. I'm like, I don't know if you guys could do it again in season two, but we'll crush it. Also, one of my favorite parts of uh, of your characters is how like they, they feel very purely your own to me. Like no other actor on the planet could have played them the same way. And I'm sure you're working with wonderful scripts here, but can you name something that is like purely you, whether it was a wardrobe choice you weighed in on, you know, a piece of dialogue you changed, something that was inspired by a choice you made on set? Um, the, the volume level of Scotty Sims. He is... <laughs> It damn near yelling all the time. That is something that I've tried to work on my whole life. Like when I was a kid, I used to get in trouble for talking and like doing too much, you know. And as I've gotten older, you know, people are like to be more chill, like like to have more of a poker face. I feel like Scotty don't know when to shut up. <laughs> uh, and I, I feel like that's my fault. <laughs> It works. It's delightful. Hey, hey th- that that's up to you. <laughs> I would say probably like the 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 thing that's mine that I that I brought to Bo would be oh, what is it? Um, <laughs> I I realized like watching myself on camera, I have like a distinct like 
when I'm thinking, I put my hands on my hips. So like whenever Bo's thinking, he puts his hands on his hips. And every time I saw that, I was always like, oh, I do do that. <laughs> hmm. So it's no, like there's, thinking. There's so many things in the season. I was like, when do I do that? Is that when <laughs> I don't remember that? <laughs> Pairs perfectly well with your characters. Gana loved every ounce of it. All right, for the end of this, I'm going to put up the uh, spoiler warning. So you could talk about everything you want freely, and we will save it until the appropriate time. But first thing I wanted to know for you two is, you know, just for your own heads, did you after did you ever have to come up with exactly how you know Bo and Scotty first met each other, and you know how they figured out that they clicked so well together? We talked about it a little bit. I mean, like when we first kind of got into it, we didn't really know the the backstory, but I know that in, I guess we're doing spoilers oh, now in, yeah, in, in, in your interview or in your uh, interrogation, mm -hmm. you talk about, what is it like uh, double cheese fries at Jerry's yeah. like yeah. Capcom. So after we, after we kind of figured that out, we sort of just figured like they probably met when they were in elementary school or something happened, but we never really sat down and said, this is what right. happened. Yeah, it was it was sort of a thing of like, we know, <laughs> we know what we know what it is, you know, like you might you my role dog like and, and, and that went a long way because we were already like we were already friends. It was almost like we partnered up the friendship that was budding in real life with the, the friendship that was written. Mm -hmm. and it, it sort of worked out on screen how it worked out, you know. The show doesn't need those specifics on screen, but when I really believe in a connection and get a little obsessed with a group of characters, I feel like the need to know everything, like give me every detail. That's what future seasons are for. Um, yes. Before they kick me out of here, a very specific question for you, Tanner, because I get a little obsessed with, uh, you know, like silent moments on screen where there's no dialogue, but you could see the wheels in a character's head turning. And one that really struck me is when you two are in the house and it, you're watching Scotty first, you know, start to smash stuff. And then he hands you the mallet. And I feel like I could feel the weight of the thought process going through his head. So can you kind of walk us through what it was like playing a moment like that and having it feel, you know, so loud and powerful, but without the dialogue to actually explain what he's going through? Yeah, I remember that was a big moment. Like when I when I read that, like, first of all, that was just a fun day to film. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a lot of emotions going through both of us. Like, like my favorite thing about working with Reed is that we we check in with each other and we let and like and we'll look at each other in the eyes and then, and then we'll go. The moment for that, I remember thinking like, this is the first time we're seeing Bo angry, and that's a big deal. And I think that because there are no words, it helps a lot more. And I love the I love the fact that he doesn't take the hammer because he's like that's yours. He picks up a big candlestick and just starts his own and that's Bo's way of saying I'm your dude. Let's fuck up this house together. <laughs> <laughs> Use my language. Uh, I could talk to you guys all day. I have a million more questions. I'm obsessed with this show. You are electric in it, and your chemistry together is hands down one of the biggest standouts of season two. So congratulations, and Thank hope you. to see you for season three.